So what if almost every single member of your family started to die one by one? This is one of the classic examples of why you should not judge a book by its cover. Could someone so beautiful, classy, wealthy be a potential psychopath or sociopath behind the closed doors and live a double life? Today's story really reminds me of the Korean pretty face cycle story that I did. You guys could check it out right here. But pretty much it was a story about a very pretty young Korean lady that happened to be a psychopath that ended up killing all her husbands, including her own family just for money. Of course, no one suspected her because she was beautiful on the outside. She was charismatic. She was kind. Who would suspect that that kind of person would be a serial killer? So remember here, like in this video and subscribing to my channel encourages me and lets me know that you guys love to hear these stories so I can continue creating these videos. And thank you so much to my subscriber who has emailed me about this case. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known about this case. So remember, you guys can email me at askcrazy at gmail.com to submit your stories. So this is a woman named Jolly Joseph. She was just in her 20s. She was known to the neighbors as very kind, active in her community. And apparently there is a very small group of Christians in India. And this happened to be a region where there were small group of Christians. So she was going to church, she was active in her community. And I can't find too many pictures of her in her 20s, but she was a young, pretty faced, a good looking lady. She was also said to be very educated and she claimed that herself, she came from a pretty well off family. She also said that she was a professor at NIT University. Smart, a professor, and from a well family, I mean, she was considered a very good catch. So in 1997, she married a man named Roy Thomas and moved into their in-laws house in Kudatai, India. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Now the family that she married off to was a pretty wealthy family. This is a house that she moved into. This is huge house. I mean, I'm guessing by the photos, this was a secluded house. They had their own entrance or road to get to this house. It was like near the beautiful jungles. It was a pastel pink, beautiful house. Her father-in-law was a government official of their district and the mother-in-law was a retired teacher. So what more can you want? She even married off to a wealthy family and it seemed like she was living a happy life. They also ended up having two children. So just a couple years into the marriage, it seemed like this perfect family was cursed upon. One by one, starting from 2002, her family members, especially her in-laws only, started to pass away mysteriously. In 2002, her mother-in-law died from a mysterious illness. Now she already had underlying conditions, so the doctors and the hospital passed it off as a natural death. In 2008, her father-in-law dies of a heart attack and no autopsies were done. Then in 2011, shockingly, her husband Roy dies from self-harm. The autopsy was done and specifically he died of cyanide poisoning. They did not look into how and where Roy got this, so they just passed it off as suicide. But Jolly did tell the neighbors and all of the other family members that he died from a heart attack. In 2014, Roy's uncle named Matthew also died from a heart attack. Then very shortly after, Roy's cousin, his name was Shaju, his daughter, technically is that his niece? I'm not really sure. Who was just two years old, died from choking on bread. In 2016, Roy's cousin, Shaju's wife dies mysteriously. So, so far, six family members relatives have passed away. And Jolly told her neighbors and her friends that there was a curse upon her family. So was it really paranormal? Was there really a curse in this wealthy family? Jolly started to gain the properties and the wealth from her in-laws. So fast forward, it was 2017 and she's been a widow for a couple years now. Jolly decided to get remarried and the person that she chose was Saju, her late husband's cousin. 
Saju was said to be a school teacher as well, so this whole family wasn't stupid. You know, this was a well educated, wealthy family. And oddly, remember Saju's daughter, two year old daughter, died mysteriously in 2014. And his wife mysteriously died in 2016. I just think it's super weird in the first place to marry again into the family. Like, you're marrying your late husband's cousin. Is that a thing in her? neighborhood to marry into family's family. I just thought that was really weird, but maybe she thought that she needed to keep herself within the family and it was better marrying off the relative of her husband rather than just a stranger. I just think that's a little weird, but. So after 2017, when Jolly got remarried, there was some property dispute between Jolly and her late husband's siblings. So there were some altercations about who was to really keep the property of her in-laws. One of Roy's siblings, aka Jolly's late husband, was named Rojo. Now I believe he was living in the US at the time, but he was the one who raised suspicions about Jolly. It seemed like to him, Jolly was pretty much taking everything from his own bloodline. So Rojo started to do his own investigation and found that in 2008, his own father or Jolly's father in law changed his will just before his passing. Now, in the new changed will, it stated that the family home will be transferred to Jolly. Now, when Rojo brought up these suspicions to his other family members, he was left with backlash, saying that maybe he was raising all these suspicions because he was greedy for the property. The other family members really did not have any suspicions on Jolly. Rojo was just not buying it. He decided to do farther investigation on his own. What was really making his guts boil? He knew his guts were right. And he was right. During his investigation, Rojo found out Out that Jolly was actually not a professor. She never worked at NIT, and the school claimed that they never even heard of this woman and she, she never worked here. But she literally had a certificate. She literally had an NIT badge saying that she was a professor. She left to work every single morning and came back at night, claiming that she was at school teaching all day for 14 years, you guys. Where was she going every single morning? And the crazy thing is, no one knows where she was this whole time. No one knows what she was actually during those hours. And all those documents were actually proven to be faked. NIT campus actually says that they saw Jolly come to the campus a couple times, loitering, just hanging out, and sometimes buying stuff from their cafe. Rojo then also finally got a copy of the autopsy of his brother, Roy. And according to all their family members and neighbors, they claimed that Jolly told them back in 2011 that Roy died from a heart attack after eating an omelet for dinner and he just collapsed in the bathroom. But in the autopsy, it showed that he was eating rice and curry the night he died and that it was ruled as a And all this time, the family believed that he just died of a natural cause, heart attack. With all these suspicions, Rojo did ask for a reinvestigation to all the death in his family to the police, and they did agree. They finally re interviewed Jolly and found so many inconsistencies. They say up to 50 discrepancies in her stories. Police looked into all of the six cases in the family death and found one thing in common. Jolly was present in all of their deaths. Oh, I just got shivers, y'all. I just got shivers. Whoa. So finally, after 14 years of lies and suspicions, it caught up to her and it revealed the true side of this pretty smart professor. By 2017, Jolly was 47 years old. Contrary to her name, Jolly, she was living a dark double life. No one knows who she truly is and what she really was thinking and where she actually came from before she was married, who her real family is, no one knows. Or at least it wasn't published in the media. She claimed that few years after her marriage, she wanted to gain the control of her family's day-to-day -day lifestyle. She didn't like how she was running the family for whatever reason and she wanted to be the head woman. So she acted and pretended to be that beautiful, great daughter-in-law who is cooking up some great soup for her mother-in-law and served her the poisonous soup. In 2008, 
Jolly confessed and said that now she wanted to gain the control of her family's property and wealth and thought that she had to get rid of her father-in-law. Now, no one knows how his will was changed. Rather, she forged it without his knowledge or somehow maybe came off as so charismatic to her father-in-law that he ended up changing it, which I believe she probably forged it. But one day, she decided to again be that proper, amazing daughter-in-law serving him some great tapioca soup or a dish. He shortly passed away in minutes. Three years passed and of course, no one expected that the next person to be eliminated was her own husband. Some rumors say that she wanted to get rid of her husband because she wanted to have an affair. She wanted to have a different lifestyle. And according to her, her marriage worsened whatever that meant to her. So she went along with the same plan, cooking him some hot dinner that was poisoned with cyanide. It was around here when Roy's uncle, his name was Matthew, raised suspicion against Roy's death. We don't know how big his suspicions were, but it was big enough for Jolly. Big enough that she knew that she needed to get rid of Matthew because she was scared that he was going to find out who was behind all of this. In 2014, Jolly serves Matthew coffee with cyanide and he ends up passing away. I guess for whatever reason, no one was still specifically suspicious of Jolly and they trusted her enough. They felt safe around her to be served by her, served food by her, and they just didn't think anything of it. So now here is a sick part where Jolly truly got what she wanted. She told her neighbors throughout time that she wanted a husband like Saju. That was Roy's cousin. So what Jolly wants, Jolly's gonna get. But Saji was already married, he had a wife, and he had a daughter. So Jolly thought that in order to gain Saju, the man that she wanted, she needed to get rid of the people that were in her way, which was number one, his daughter. Now why she wanted to marry the cousin? Did she really like him as a man? Or did she want to marry someone that was again within the family? No one knows. In 2014, she allegedly killed his two-year-old daughter. This happened at a church and a Allegedly, she was choking on some bread. Hard to believe that no one suspected Jolly. I mean, I mean, I'm sure it's Saju and his wife, her name was Silly. I mean, I'm sure they were devastated their two-year-old daughter died. I guess she sold herself as someone's charismatic and so safe that they were safe for Jolly to be around the presence of their daughter. Now that Jolly got rid of Saju's daughter, next she wanted to come for his wife, Silly. Now, how long did she spend time with them? Did she pretend to be close to Silly and Saju, no one really knows. But in 2016, Jolly was able to successfully once again poison Silly and she was murdered. Supposedly, Silly was found at a dentist clinic and she was found having seizures and foaming in her mouth before collapsing. Don't know how Jolly was able to bring water to the dentist clinic or maybe she poisoned the water that Silly brought to the dentist clinic. Saju and Jolly ended up falling in love where they seemed like they were a good match and they ended up getting married in 2017, just one year after the incident. People question if Saju knew about Jolly. Could he really not have known that his wife and his daughter died at the presence of Jolly? Either that or again, Jolly came up as so seductive, swooped Saju by his heart and his feet and maybe and probably used his grief and vulnerability at the time to win him over. In an interview, he did say that five months into the marriage, he found out that Jolly was not a professor, but apparently he did nothing about it. So it seemed like they went on to live a happy, fake life until again, Rojo, the family member, caught up to their lies. And in 2019, she was finally arrested and confessed to all the murders. So not much again is known about Jolly and her life before marriage, but supposedly this was Jolly's old house that she lived in or grew up in. Clearly it's a big difference from this house to the upgraded wealthy house. And maybe she wanted that lifestyle that she thought that she couldn't have. She didn't really have the education. She was not really a professor. It seemed like she really did not come from a wealthy family. If she did, she wouldn't feel the need to steal other people and kill them for it. And by faking her past, her career, personality, she thought that she could literally gain all the power she wanted. As of right now, she's been only charged with three people's murder. I believe the other cases, they have to find more evidences for the courts. And two others, along with 
Jolly were charged and one was a man that owned a jewelry shop and he supposedly supplied her cyanide all this time. Saji was also arrested but he claims his innocence and he said that he didn't know about anything and he is a victim as well and he believes that he was Nick's target. Saju claims that Jolly never missed a day of church, went to Roy and the family's graveyards and gave them flowers, and she did the whole good wife acting. My personal two cents says that I'm leaning towards more that he was fooled because if she was able to fool multiple people like this, I do think that it's possible that Saji was also a victim as well. So I found this article that says that Silly, Saju's wife, knew about the flirtatious relationship between Saju and Jolly and that Jolly even messaged Saju everything's clear on the day of her murder. But I don't know how true and authentic this article is, so if anyone knows more information about this, please comment and let us know. Experts who have evaluated Jolly believe that she is a sociopath. Quote, Jolly Joseph, a suspected serial killer, was arrested in India. A forensic psychologist said Jolly exhibits signs of a sociopath or someone who suffers from antisocial personality disorder. Compared to a psychopath, the traits of a sociopath are less severe because they blend in with society, avoid any engagement with the law, and are good at manipulating individuals. They're good at portraying themselves as a part of society, says a forensic psychologist. I am just shocked that she was able to fool so many people for so many years. I think it's such a good thing. Just me as an individual studying psychology, I love to watch psychology videos every time I go to sleep. And it's one way not only to try and educate myself, but to protect myself, to know about all these different kind of people that you will come across in your life and the possibility of coming across people who are psychopaths, sociopaths are very high. Of course, I'm not saying that every sociopath or psychopath psychopath and murderers, but I'm sure you guys will agree it is so common to be manipulated by someone else and it's important to protect yourself and have your own thoughts and mind and question things when your guts tell you. So let me know what you guys have thought about the story and how someone like Jolly was able to fool so many people around her. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys in my next video.